Oh, so why were you late for maths class? What was happening? She helped us a little bit for answering the question. Oh, okay. Did you get your maths results? No. No, maths too soon. English, chemistry, no. Maybe a forbidden you know, topic. Okay. DIFC, workbook, physics, materials, ideal gas law. Now, you maybe even did this law in chemistry. What are you doing in chemistry at the moment? Um, um, in Camelot Lab, London. Right? Yeah. In chemistry? Yeah, in Camelot Lab, London. Okay. Have you done um, gas law in chemistry? Not yet. No? I've experienced it before. Okay. Right, if you can write this off. Yeah. Can you write this down? Ideal gas law. Somewhere? I'm sorry. to do quite a bit to do actually quite a bit to do okay yeah, yeah. Boyle's law. you know Boyle's law yes. what is it <laughs> then you don't know it if you forgot it yeah but tell me what Boyle's law is do you know it okay Boyle's law Boyle said for an ideal gas you remember we did ideal gas yesterday P is proportional to 1 over V do you know this word proportional? See. Not mm, yeah. Opposite. Well, I wonder if these guys do you know this word proportional? I can write it for you. It looks like this. Boyle said P is proportional to one over V. Do you know this symbol? Yeah. What's it mean? It's closed but not. Yeah. Like this. It means that. If P is multiplied by 2, then 1 over V is multiplied by 2. Yeah. So if the, v, if the P is bigger, the V is smaller. And if the V is bigger, the P is smaller. Oh, if, if the temperature and the mass are, are constant. So you can make the P bigger, you can make the V bigger and the P smaller, and vice versa. As a formula, you can write it like this. P is proportional to 1 over V. Or, another way to write it is that P multiplied by V is constant. It doesn't change. Simply put, Boyle noticed that if the volume is half, the pressure is doubled, or vice versa. This is called Boyle's Law. chart that's different to use. Yeah, not the same. So that is proportional. Mm -hmm. yeah. Please try to remember this word. Okay. You got all of this? Yeah. Gal said she had an accident. Do you know what happened? Um, she came down from the tree. Yeah. And the oh yeah. The uh, uh, hey. Hurt her, her face. Was, that was uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's fine. She didn't notice that she dropped her foot inside. Like the pillar beside the road walk. The, the road walk. Onto the train? No. The bus. Oh! oh. Yeah, she came down from the bus. Yeah. Yeah. So there was like a hill. Just a yeah. pavement. Yeah. So and he didn't notice the pavement. So in between the bus and the pavement, he dropped his leg. Ah. So it's like twisted. Oh. So, uh, 
Guy went home afterwards. Oh my, okay, that sounds serious. All right, you got this. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, what might other formulas be for it? So, um, pressure temperature graphs. You won't be surprised to know that there's a relationship between temperature and pressure. Now, before I tell you the relationship. What do you think it might be? What might the relationship be? So in the last example, Boyle said, if the P is bigger, the V is smaller, or if the V is smaller, the P is bigger. You know. What do you think the relationship might be between temperature and pressure? Oh, come on, somewhere try, try to be awake. Oh, okay. What do you think the relationship might be between temperature and pressure? Mm. The temperature is bigger, yeah. so the, the pressure is, is less. Uh, is, is, is a bi also bigger. Yeah, so you think temperature is bigger, pressure is bigger. Yeah. Temperature is smaller, pressure is smaller. Yeah. And vice versa. Pressure is bigger, temperature is bigger. And pressure is smaller, temperature is smaller. Yeah. Um, so we, yeah, this is true. We know this. If the temperature is bigger, then the pressure will be bigger. It'll increase as well. You can think about this, you know, like um, at home when you're cooking, yeah. you maybe you put a you put a lid on this, yeah. and then you heat it, and then what will happen? The pressure increases yeah. until it opens. Yeah. You know, and um, so you can actually put it on a graph. Oh, and <laughs> if the pressure increases too much, the temperature gets so hot, and then kaboom, yeah. explodes. This graph is very very important let me draw it again for you here so and I, you need to draw this graph carefully so here I'm going to put temperature and I'll put temperature in Celsius and here I'll put pressure and of course we'll put pressure in Kelvin uh, sorry what am I saying um, Pascal's Okay. Here's the experiment. Um, imagine you have some gas, like um, oxygen, something like that. So you measure the temperature and you measure the pressure. Now, what will happen if you increase the temperature? What will happen to the pressure of the oxygen? It'll increase. It'll increase. Yeah. So the graph will go, it will go like this, and it'll go like this. Okay. So maybe you have four points, and you draw a straight line. For, you know, for example, maybe this is oxygen. Okay. Then maybe you take a different gas, like nitrogen. Um, and again, you measure the temperature, and you measure the pressure, and it also increases. So maybe this is nitrogen, for example, whatever it is. And then maybe you do the same thing with, like, CO2. Now, what you might notice if you take your data, you know this word data? Like in, uh, results, results, information. If you draw this line backwards, it reaches a point here. If you draw this one backwards, it reaches the same point. And this one here reaches the same point as well. Can I continue back more? Can I go to the left more? No. No, I have to stop. Yes. Why have I to stop here? Because pressure can't be negative. Do you understand? Yeah. If you have a gas in here, the pressure has to be outwards, positive. And what you notice is this is true for every gas, for every material. They all would meet back at this point here, which is minus 273. Now maybe some of you actually recognize this number as special. Does anyone know why this is special? Have you seen this number before? It's special. Yeah, this is a special number. So it's a... Uh is uh, called the how to say that word absolute zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yes, that means uh, every every single before the uh, uh, every every gas will be be bigger than this. Yeah. Yeah. So the person who did this experiment was Calvin, and he noticed that it looks like the coldest possible temperature is two seven three minus two seven three Celsius because you can't have negative pressure, so you have to stop here. So Kelvin was the one who noticed that uh, the smallest temperature is minus 273. And we call this temperature absolute zero. It's the coldest possible temperature. It's like the, 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 like the minimum temperature you can have. Quite cold. Quite cold. It doesn't occur naturally. It's, it's, you can do it in a lab. So, um, the definition is absolute zero is the lowest possible temperature any material can be at. It's the minimum temperature. Okay, so I think you should write this down. Absolute zero is the lowest possible temperature any material can be at. Yes, pretty cold, pretty cold. Now, this gives us the idea we shall use a new temperature scale called Kelvin, which is the same as Celsius, but increased by 273.15 units. So that is, we say the temperature in Kelvin is the temperature in Celsius plus 273. So, for example, what that would mean is if the temperature is minus two seven, well it's two seven three point one five or whatever. If the temperature is uh, two seven three Celsius, we say in Kelvin, that's zero Kelvin. Yeah, yeah. And if it's minus two seven two Celsius, we say that's one Kelvin. And let's go up to zero Celsius, that would be two seven three Kelvin. You see, Kelvin is really the same as Celsius, except you just move it so that zero represents minus 273. So Kelvin is nice because it means the temperature is always positive and the coldest temperature is zero Kelvin. Have you seen this before, Kelvin? Yeah. Yeah, so this is the formula, if you want to write that down, to, to convert it. Got that? Yeah. Okay. Is that okay, Sam? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Continue? Continue? Mm -hmm. So, by using Kelvin, the temperature is always positive. Uh, formally, so this is, the, this is the, the technical definition of Kelvin. The Kelvin is a scale of temperature with absolute zero as zero Kelvin and the triple point of water as exactly 273.16 uh, Kelvin. So this is the definition of Kelvin you need for the exam. This is the definition of Kelvin.
Yeah? Continue? Summer? Okay. Yeah? Yeah. So, um, how do we count in physics? When we count, we do use a unit. That is, uh, imagine we had some hot water. We do not say we have 10 to the 23 molecules of H2O. We use a unit to count. I'll give you an example. Um, bakers, you know, people who make cakes, yeah. they count in 13s. So they would, they would group things together in groups of 13. Okay? Uh, farmers, farmers group together in groups of 12. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in physics, we don't count in 13s because 13 is too small of a unit. Um, what unit do we count in? We count in something called Avogadro's constant. So we count in something we call moles. So if we have one mole of x, that's equal to, and I'll tell you what it is now, a lot, okay? One mole is a lot. One mole of something is, uh, like for example, one mole of molecules, one mole of coffee, one mole of stars, is defined as one Avogadro's constant. And Avogadro's constant is defined as 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So if I have a mole of something, I have a lot of it, okay? A mole is a very big unit to count in. Do you understand? It's a big unit to count. Avogadro constant. Uh, yeah, is this. That's called one mole. Yeah, and I, I remember the, the mole means in Chinese, but I don't know what uh, uh, Avogadro. Avogadro? Uh, Avogadro, yeah. That's the name of this number. Yeah, okay. It's called NA, yeah. Avogadro's number. You use this in chemistry. Uh, yeah. Not uh, yet, but, but you will. But will. Yeah. Also in, in the physics. Yeah. yeah. Yeah? Continue? Oh, sorry. Have you seen this number before, Dan? In chemistry or physics? In both. In both, okay. Can I continue? Sorry. No problem. Have you heard of this person before? Yeah. Avogadro? Uh, no. That's Chinese no. Avogadro, is it? I forget that. What's the one? He doesn't know this person? Yeah. Cause it is called the number is this person. This person, yeah, Avogadro. Yeah. Continue? Continue. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if I have one mole of H2O, or one mole of coffee cups, or one mole of stars, then I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules of H2O, or cups of coffee, or stars. It just counts. That's all it does. It counts. Okay, so imagine I have one mole of cups of coffee. That's a lot of coffee, right? Yeah. Because this is one cup of coffee. A lot. A lot. 10 to the 23 cups of coffee. It's a lot, okay? That's a lot of coffee. What would the mass be? I want you to calculate it. So, what's the mass of one cup? Roughly, what would you say? 
What do you think the mass of this is? Mm. Roughly. Is it 10 kilograms? No, what is it roughly? Two Of what? 200 grams. Maybe, two, maybe 200 grams. Yeah. 200, 250 grams? Yeah. yeah. So what's that? 0 0.25. Yeah. Okay. Can you calculate how much it would be if I had a mole of this? What would it be? 1.5. Uh, file Roughly, zero, yeah. Zero, zero, four. Huh? Are you sure? Calculate, let's calculate. So, one cup of coffee equals zero point two five kilograms, yeah, yeah? Yeah. So, one mole of coffee cups. Yeah, it's equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23 times 0 0.25, yeah. which is equal to, what's that, 1.5004. 1 oh, okay, roughly 1.5 yeah. times 10 to the 23 kilograms. Yeah. That's big, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's called the molar mass. If I say to you, what is the molar mass? It means, what is the mass of one mole? The molar mass is the mass of one mole. Usually, we actually give this in grams, not kilograms. So, it would be more normal to say this is 1.5 times 10 to the 26 grams. Is actually usual. For molar mass. Okay, so uh, molar, for example, okay, well, I'll let you write that down first. So, for example, uh, the molar mass of H2O is about 18 grams. There's about 18 grams in a mole of H2O. I don't know if you knew this. Some important notation. We usually use big N to mean the number of molecules and small n to be the number of moles. Okay? So, uh, you can write a formula like this. The number of molecules equals the number of moles multiplied by Avogadro's number. So, remember, big N is bigger than small N. That's how I remember it. This is for molecules and this is for moles. Is that okay, Ben? Yes. It's okay for you to leave it, Ben? You look like you're thinking. What are you thinking? Is it okay, Ben? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Yeah? So, next now. Here's an example we'll do. We have one litre of water. The molar mass of H2O is 18 grams, about. 
How many moles of H2O are in one liter of water? Okay, so um, what's the mass of one liter of water? What's the mass of one liter of water? One kilogram. One kilogram. One thousand grams, yeah? How much is one mole? One mole is about 18 grams. Yeah. So how many moles of H2O are there? It's 1,000 divided by 18. 18. Okay, can you calculate the first part? What's that? About 55. 55, roughly. Yeah? Now, next part. How many molecules of H2O are there? So, yeah, what are you going to do, Khalifa? Yeah. Yeah. The previous answer. Times 55. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so about 10 to the 25 uh, molecules. Yeah, is that okay? Yes. Somewhere? What's wrong? Guys, you need to tell me what's wrong. You look confused. What's well, wrong? Auto calculator is mo uh, how many molecules. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. How many molecules? You. How many molecules is yeah. equal to moles yeah. multiply Avogadro? Yeah, and uh, this was fifty-five. Yeah, uh, and plus. Oh uh, uh, yeah. 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 All right. What did you say this was? Um, three point three one one times ten raised to power twenty-five. Molecules. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm okay. Sure. Yeah. How many oxygen atoms are there? So sorry, one one point so one. This many. Yeah. It's the same. It's the same. Yeah, because you have this many H two O. Yeah. So how many O's do you have? Same. This same. Yeah. Now D, Five. how many H atoms do you have? Plus two. Huh? Plus, Plus two. two. Yeah. Plus Five. two. Ten. Plus. Ten. Plus. Not plus. Uh, not is uh, ten. 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 Oh. Multiply. Uh, multiply. Two. Come on, Summer. You know these words, don't you? Don't you? Plus What's this one? Plus yeah, this one? Uh, molecule. Multiple, uh, mo not mo molecule. And, uh, this one? Okay. Yeah, or divide. <laughs> and this one? Minus. Negative. Yeah, minus. Yeah. Negative. Somewhere. Sorry. <laughs> okay, next example. Right, so let's go back to Boyle's law. It won't surprise you to learn that there's other relationships. So, this is Boyle's. P is proportional to 1 over V. Okay? We also learned that P is proportional to T. We learned that one, okay? Also, V is proportional to M or N. P is proportional to N or N. And V is proportional to T. Sorry, sorry. Well, the difference between the third and the fourth is the same, right? Which one? The okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it's okay. Now, it's actually possible you can put all of these together into one formula. So you don't really need this because you can put this all together into one formula called the ideal gas law. And this formula says PV equals N or T, where R is a constant, or PV equals NKT, where K is a constant. And it depends on if you're using moles or molecules, which constant you use. Now, we usually use moles. So this is the one we use, okay? And the value of R is 8.31. Actually, what I want to do is calculate what the units are. PV equals N or T. So N is PV over R T. So what's the unit for P? It's a constant. We're going to work it out now. Oh, sorry. I did that wrong. Or 
is equal to PV over NT. Uh, what's the unit for P? Pascal. Pascal, which is Newton's per meter cubed. Volume? Is, um, meter uh, cubed. T? Kelvin, or Celsius. And N is just number of moles. So you can actually cancel this with this. And the unit is uh, Newton per Newton per Kelvin per mole. And the value of R is 8.31. It's a constant. It's, act it's on the calculator as well, I think. So this is what the R is equal to. Did you see this formula before? No. No? Okay, this is a ideal gas law. And it's very important. You must use Kelvin for this formula. This must be in Kelvin. It doesn't, the formula doesn't work in Celsius. It only works in Kelvin. What's R? What's R? It's a constant. It's just, it's just called the ideal gas law constant. Sorry, who said they've seen this formula before? Have you seen it? Ben, have you seen this formula before? No? Somewhere? Oh, okay. 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 Continue. Okay. So, sorry, let's do a simple question. Yeah. yeah. So, R equals to 83.3. 8.31, yeah. From where? No, no, that's just, I'm telling you that. It's a value, it's a constant. That's yeah, it's a fact. Number. Yeah. Um, okay, so I, I talk a lot here, blah, 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 blah. So um, I'll, I'll get to the point, okay? Can I scroll down? PV equals N or T. But what about if you want to use N instead? Well, you can say PV equals um, N, NA over or N A T because you can just put in an N A. What is this equal to? N multiply N A. That's equal to N, number of molecules. So this constant here changes. We call this constant now K B. And if you want to calculate the value of K, it's just equal to the value of R divided by Avogadro. So the R is 8.31 and the K, called it's called the Boltzmann's constant, it's this. We don't actually use this one. We just use this one in class. So you only need to remember this value, 8.31. Okay, so don't worry about this one. With chemistry, with Lorraine, you'll study this as well. She'll use this formula in class. And she'll also use this one here. Okay? So, we always use Kelvin. Just remember that too. Always use Kelvin for this formula. Okay. Um, here is some molar masses which you'll need to know. So the first one is water. Uh, 18, roughly 18 grams. You, you should need to write these down. The next one is carbon dioxide, which is 44. Hydrogen, which is 2. Helium, which is 4, oxygen, which is 32, nitrogen, which is 28. And it's also good to know the structure. So carbon dioxide is CO2, 1C and 2O. Hydrogen is 2H, uh, H2. Uh, helium is HE, oxygen is O2, and nitrogen is N2. M maybe you did this in chemistry? N2, O2, 1HE. H2, CO2, and H2O. Maybe you studied this in chemistry? Yes, mm -hmm. no? Yes. Yeah. Can you copy this table down? Easy. Ah, uh, not too easy. It's easier than density. 
Really? Because I know they're in uh, atoms number. Yeah, atomic number, yeah. You're, yeah, you're right. Uh, from the table, from the periodic I table. I know 2 and 2, 1 and is 14. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Continue? No. Continue? What are you on? Oxygen? Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Continue. Okay. So we have just one example, but it's a big example, and we're going to do it together. Okay? A cylinder tank. Cylinder. Height, one meter. Yeah. Radius, 30 centimeters. It's filled with helium. So there's helium in here. Okay. The tank is warm at room temperature, 26.85. So the temperature is 26.85 Celsius, which equals 300 Kelvin. We leave it. Yeah. The tank is at a pressure of three atmospheres. So the pressure is equal to three atmospheres. Now, remember atmosphere, what do we say, is 101,325 pascals, is that right? So that's 303,975 pascals. Yeah? Remember atmosphere, last class? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you do part one here, A part one. I want how many moles of helium? Oh, and uh, what did we say the molar mass of helium was? What's the molar mass? What's the molar mass of helium? 4.02602. Okay, so 4 grams a mole. Okay, question one. How many moles of helium are there? Right. How many moles of helium? Calculate. Uh, oh. Yeah. So to calculate this, we have to use the formula PV equals NRT. Do you know the P? Yes. There it is there, yeah. yeah. Do you know the V? Yeah. Yeah, in the bottom. Do you know the R? You do. It's 8.31. Do you know the temperature? Two you do. It's 300. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so tell me now, please, the N. Calculate. We said it's a constant, remember? 8.31. Yeah. Uh, it's, we use meter. Yeah. Okay. And you know the formula band pi or squared yeah, h. Yeah, yeah,
Got that? What you got then? <laughs> no. Come on, guys. It's eight point tray one. Thirty-four. Okay. Mm, by five. Okay. Continue. Somewhere? No, 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 no. My calculator has something wrong. Maybe you have something wrong. No, 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 no. no. Come on, I want to continue. Next okay, one. Okay, 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 okay. Continue. Yeah. All right. How many answer. molecules of helium are there? How many molecules? So what do I do now? That's equal to N, Na. Yeah? So it's 34 moles, and each mole has Avogadro constant. So what do we get here now? What you get, Ben? Uh, two point oh eight. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Molecules. Okay, part three. How many atoms of helium are there? Well, is helium HE or HE2? HE. HE. So you're right. Very good, Ben. It's the same. Okay. B, part one. Some gas escapes. The pressure is two. How many moles of helium are there? So what happens now is some gas comes out. So the pressure now is two instead of three. What's the N? Okay, well, we use the same formula. N equals PV over RT. Uh, this time the P is 2. So that's 202650 times pi times R squared times H over 8.31 times 300. Let's see what we get. So, uh, 20, 20, 20, 23 moles. Therefore, how many moles, how many escaped? So if we have 23, but at the start we had 24.5, then 11.5 moles of helium escaped. I'm sure, 23 moles. Let's see. Oh, you ran it up to Okay. Yep. 22. Okay, 23 then. Is that okay? Yes? Yes. Three. What was the volume of the escaped helium? So the helium that came out, I want its volume. Yeah. So again, I can use this formula. Yeah. V equals N or T over P. Now, wait, wait, Ben, wait. What's the N? What's the OR? 8.31. What's the T? 300. Because the room is at 300. Yeah. And what's the P? Uh, 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 P is something. Yeah, P is something, yeah? Uh, one, five, one, we don't know the... Uh, it's normal. B? It's normal pressure. One atmosphere. One. Yeah. 101, 325. OK. 
Okay, and finally, C. If the tank was left open until no more helium escaped, then how many moles of helium are in the tank? So what happens is you keep the tank open and the helium comes out. But not all the helium comes out. Some of it stays inside. Yeah. 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 You, you think you know. I want the N. The N is PV over RT. Yeah, very good. P is 1. Because you wait until the pressure here and here are both one atmosphere on the inside and the outside. V is the cylinder. Pi or squared H. 8.31 300. So 11.5 moles left inside. Maybe that's not a surprise because that's half of this number. And the pressure went from two atmospheres to one atmosphere. Firstly, three atmospheres. Yeah, is okay? One party around one party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Up to what? To what? Up. You didn't write this down? No, I did. I'm just going to get yeah. something straight. So um for the for the BI? The BI? Yeah. What BI? Yeah. BI. I'm just going to get some. Oh sorry, a B yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> I got everything here, like, so for this, like, the open D2, where did it come from? Which one? Open D2. That's the radius. Okay. okay. I'm using the formula yeah. pi r squared h to get the volume. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Okay. You, you have done this before, Ben. You've studied this before? A little bit? No. No? Okay. No. Okay. I remember I just started something more. Uh, just, just chemistry. Chemistry, yeah. yeah. Okay. Is this okay, Silver? You don't look. It's okay. Silver? Yeah. Kalifa? Can I close this? And close this? Yeah. Okay, so look, just practice for five minutes and we'll start the next lesson. Just for five minutes. Uh, yeah. These are all these are all exam type questions. Well maybe not the first one, that's too easy.